Hello everyone, Alistair Gold here from Hotspur Way where Mauricio Pochettino has just held his press conference ahead of the match against Crystal Palace. Um, it was kind of a short but sweet press conference, plenty said, it was all wrapped up rather quickly, lots and lots of injury news but actually on the whole for a change for Tottenham Hotspur, quite positive really. Obviously apart from Giovanni Lo Celso who we'll come to in a minute, but in terms of players back in training, uh, Tongi Ondembele, Ryan Sessegnon, Carl Walker-Peters, Eric Dyer. They've all been back in full training this week. Obviously, the first sessions uh, more so um, with all the international players coming back now, but they're back in training, and that's a good thing. Pochettino says they're going to be assessed over the next, well, I suppose it's only tomorrow, really, is their last training session ahead of Saturday's match, and he'll decide which of those will play a part against Palace. You'd maybe sense that it might be a little bit too early for Ryan Sessegnon, obviously, um, been out for such a long time since those European Under-21 Championships when he picked up that hamstring injury. Um, so it may be more of a case of gradually bringing him in, but we shall see. You never know. He might throw a curveball and, and stick him on the bench. In terms of other players, Juan Foyth, uh, he's in the late stages of conditioning now, so he'll be um, rejoining the group quite soon. Uh, Davinson Sanchez came back from international duty with Colombia with uh, complaining of irritation in his ankle. Uh, seems to be the new buzz word or phrase at Tottenham at the moment, complaining of irritation. Eric Dyer had that in his hip as well. Strange new term, but we'll roll with it. Um, he's back and, and that'll obviously be assessed. In a weird way, it kind of, I know it's not what Pochino will want, but it does kind of help him with the whole Vertonghen Sanchez dilemma or conundrum that he um, has been dealing with recently uh, in that it just lets him, lets him play with that vertonghen Alderweireld partnership. And don't forget, Vertonghen's played three 90-minute matches now in the last, what, nine days, ten days or so. So he should be match fit and sharp now. Um, obviously, Pochettino's a very big fan of Davinson Sanchez, so he's not going to want him out at any point. But it just does help him with those selection dilemmas at the moment. Good selection dilemmas, of course. On Lo Celso, we know obviously now with his hip problem, he's going to be out until late October um, at least which is, quite frankly, a pain in the backside for everyone involved or in the hip um, because he was just looking to settle in. Pochettino said he'd been doing all the right things, adapting to the club and the way that everyone plays and the philosophy and getting used to the culture in England. Um, and now he's going to be out for what's almost two months because of that uh, injury, which he didn't actually feel was that bad. The Argentinian FA clarified as a groin injury and then he came back and they found it was a problem with his hip. Um, I think it was after a bit of a couple of rough tackles um, in Argentina's match against Chile. Only a friendly, um, a friendly albeit with 10 yellow cards in it. So he's going to be out a while now. Pochettino says it's, it's very sad. He, you kind of felt that he was on the verge of blaming Argentina for bringing him in but actually never went that far. You know, taking a player who didn't have much pre-season because he was at the Copa America in the summer um, and taking him out back across to South America. Um, well, it's actually, I think it was in America, the friendlies, um, to play matches, you know, when he really hadn't had that much of a pre-season or match fitness. But he didn't. He, he said, you know, saying anything now doesn't change the fact that he's injured. Um, it doesn't really help the scenario. And he said, it just that's what club life is. It's about adapting as coaches and sports science staff to anything that can happen on these international breaks. You know, Davinson Sanchez, I think, was the last player back today uh, for Spurs. But other than that, you know, they're all coming back on Wednesday. And literally, that's what, two days or so before each match. It's, it's something that football clubs are used to, obviously, but it does certainly take um, an amount of adapting and improvising and knowing what your team selection is going to be so different after an international break to what it would normally be. In other positive news, uh, Pochettino said that he had a kind of big, almost hour-long meeting with the players today here at Hotspur Way. Got a lot of things sorted out by the sounds of it, lots of positive stuff. Um, he felt that everyone's now refocused, looking forward. Obviously, we know he absolutely hated the fact that the uh, foreign transfer windows were open for what was it, almost a month um, after the domestic English transfer window closed. Um, he hated that period, made it very clear. And now he knows his squad until January at least. They're all very settled, looking forward to the what's ahead. Um, nobody's going anywhere. He was asked specifically about Christian Eriksen. He, he wanted to make it clear that, you know, Christian Eriksen has never said he's, not, he's unhappy at Spurs. And that's never been the case. He said it's just about new challenges and things like that. It hasn't happened for Ericsson. He is still at the club and he says he's quite happy to be here. Um, 
He said, obviously, while the transfer kind of window was open, there were moments clearly when his mind wasn't in the right place and that wasn't why he was playing. When we say mind not in the right place as well, we're talking about 100% focused on the job at hand because we know Pochettino philosophy and his demands, it really does mean that everyone has to be kind of fully committed. Otherwise, the collective, as it were, doesn't work. Um, and that's why he said he felt before Arsenal that Ericsson was absolutely on point and, and fully focused, and that was why he played, and he, and he played pretty well, obviously scoring as well on the day. Um, and now he feels that everyone's looking forward. Everyone, I think the phrase he used was outside interests are now or, or put to the side, something like that. Um, so that can only be a good thing for Spurs going through because they've got a really, really busy uh, period of game. I think it's Pochettino said three... What was it? Seven, seven matches in 21 days, I think he said. Um, obviously, everyone that didn't leave the club is going to have to play a part now. It, it, there's, it's a big squad and he's going to have to utilise all of them. Um, and what he made also very clear that any team decisions that he's going to be making over the coming weeks, they're purely going to be based on performances. Um, nothing to do with how long a player's got in his contract. Obviously, we know Vertonghen, Alderweireld and Eriksson. They're all in their last 10 months or so of their contracts. He says that will not play a part. It's going to be purely based on how they're training and how they're performing on the pitch as well, um, which I suppose is all you want as a player. Um, and especially, you know, I, I know I've said this before, but if a player is looking for a move in January or setting up some kind of free transfer next summer, they have to be performing. They have to kind of get these suitors to kind of be interested because certainly those three players, there was no serious interest in this summer. No one came in with a bid that even turned Tottenham's head. So they, they've got to put on a show as well to, to make sure there's a queue of people lining up for their services. Talking of people that are performing, um, young Troy Parrott. I asked um, Pochettino about the 17-year-old today because there's been a lot of buzz around him. Not least, you know, Pochettino naming him in his Champions League squad. Spurs have put out um, videos of his various goals that he scored, not only for Spurs under-23s, but in the last week he's been playing for Ireland under-21s scored three goals in his first two games ever at that age group and if you want to see his goals against Sweden the other day they are crackers the first one a really sweet curling finish into top corner second one an individual goal where he runs the entire um, half in the Swedish half and then he gets there and does a little very very clever chip over two defenders and the goalkeeper really really kind of clever mature goal and if you've heard any of his interviews he's done with Irish newspapers or TV and radio. He's a very mature lad for 17. So there's a bit of buzz about him, you know, not least from the club themselves, um, putting his goals out there and, and making people very aware of him. And let's not forget those pre-season performances against the likes of Juventus, Real Madrid, Bayern Munich, Inter Milan, Manchester United, where he really held his own against much older players. However, Pochettino was very, very clear that he wanted to play down that uh, kind of excitement. Um, he said, you know, he's, he's very young, um, still got a way to go. There'll be weeks when he trains with the first team and there'll be weeks when he's involved with the under 23s. Um, and it's just a case of maybe not getting him too carried away, if anything, the player himself, and just keeping him relaxed and focused on what he's got to do. And he says, the more relaxed he is, you know, the better chance he's got of actually fulfilling his potential. Um, I think we all know as well, and he's kind of referred to it in the past, Pochettino very much burned by the dealings he had with Marcus Edwards. We all know about the infamous Lionel Messi comparison. Um, Marcus Edwards, a slightly different player, obviously, but he was 17 when those quotes were made as well, and it just obviously never happened for him at Spurs. Different kind of... different players. Let's put it that way. It's probably the easiest way to say it, him and Troy Parra. And, and he obviously, as Pochettino said himself, didn't take those comments in a, in a positive way. He kind of took them in a slightly different way and obviously we know his career has taken different turns and he's now um, a Vitoria player out in Portugal and I think there's a fear that if Pochettino builds up a player too much like obviously Troy Parrott is only 17 that that can come off the rails and it can hinder them rather than help them um, but we'll see we'll see I mean it's very much a case of just if he gets his chance, whether he takes it or not right now. But Pochettino's, obviously, his comments are that there shouldn't be a pressure on him to do that right now at just 17 years old. And that makes perfect sense. You know, I, I said to him about, obviously, there's this excitement on social media, lots of people kind of watching his goals and looking forward to when he gets his chance. Um, and he said, well, you know, social media gets very excited when I score a goal in training. It doesn't mean anything. It's nice that the fans get excited, but ultimately we've got to let them develop at their own pace. 
Um, and, and that's what Spurs are going to be looking to do. You know, there's obviously there's a chance that he could play a part against Colchester in the um, Carabao Cup later this month. Um, but Pochettino is going to be very, very much watching his progress. He's a big admirer of his. Uh, we know that. Um, but he's not going to rush him along. You know, he was the same with Harry Kane and Harry Kane was 21. So um, he's going to play it the right way. And I guess if there's anyone that knows about developing young players, it's Mauricio Pochettino. Just one little kind of last bit that's kind of came to light after the press conference, some quotes from Serge Aurier that have been doing the rounds. Um, he's obviously speaking after his Ivory Coast performances. Um, I think he played both games for them. He's their captain. Uh, that's come out now from the media over there. Some strange comments. It depends how you take them. I mean, he said he, he admitted that he wanted to leave in the summer, but the club wouldn't let him. And he was asked about whether he was worried about the competition at Tottenham at right back. And he said... Um, what competition? There's no competition. Could be taken a couple of different ways. I mean, he could just be a bit of bravado trying to joke. We don't know the entire context of it, but it obviously it doesn't sound great, especially as at the moment it seems that Carl Walker-Peters is ahead of him um, in the right-back kind of rankings. And Pochettino would rather play a centre-back Davinson Sanchez there than um, Serge Aurier. Of course, to be fair, playing devil's advocate, it could be similar to the Christian Eriksen scenario in that he didn't feel Aurier was fully focused and that he may start coming back into the team. For me, I'd be surprised if Walker-Peters doesn't play if he's fit tomorrow and then I think it's his shirt to lose. Um, and certainly some comments will have been made behind the scenes about Serge Aurier quotes once, they, uh, once they're known by the club staff if they haven't seen them already. But uh, no, it was interesting. Like I say, short but sweet press conference, but plenty in there to kind of dig into. Um, and it'll be really interesting to see what team he lines up with uh, Pochettino against Crystal Palace because he's actually got a lot of options now, certainly in those midfield slots. So um, we're going to get a sense more of what Pochettino sees this Tottenham Hotspur team being in the, uh, in the new season. I think this is when he should really be judged more than those first few games. Um, so I shall catch you all from um, the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium with the visit of Roy Hodgson's men on Saturday afternoon. <laughs>